Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Connor, and this is the final presentation for my design project in the Spring 2016 section of EECE 4712 Embedded Systems, taught under Dr. Morshed at the University of Memphis. The purpose of my project is to create a node-based multi-sensor data logging device. From scientific experiments to operating machines and even to household uses, data plays a key role in our society. However, data can sometimes be difficult to collect for reasons such as it being unsafe to do so, the collection point being very remote, and sometimes the data can happen either very rarely or too frequently for a human to be able to record. By being able to better collect data, the efficiency of various applications may be improved. These applications range from temperature and humidity logging in a greenhouse, measuring contamination within a lake environment, and even extend to more household uses such as monitoring the temperature in various rooms and the weather outside. The objectives for this project are to develop a portable, low-cost, and versatile data logging device that is capable of both real-time monitoring and archival logging. The archival stations must be capable of logging and storing the data for retrieval at a later date. For the real-time stations, multiple nodes must be supported within a network, with each node having its own set of sensors. The real-time nodes will be set up in a mesh network and stream data to a software-based GUI monitoring station. With that in mind, the following specifications have been decided on. In addition to the online and offline nodes, a base station is also required to interface between the online nodes and the monitoring station. As a use case for this device is remote logging, the device must be capable of running from a battery supply as well as a DC supply should the node be situated within or near a facility that can provide power. In order to get a decent distance between real-time nodes, a range of approximately 100 meters has been decided. In order to timestamp the data points, an integrated real-time clock module will also be required. As this is intended to be an extendable sensor platform rather than an application-specific device, the device must support a modular sensor connection so that an end user may easily modify the attached sensors. Lastly, as previously mentioned, battery operation is key to the success of this project. Therefore, ultra-low QSN current is of great importance in order to maximize battery life and thus total available logging time. The hardware that has been selected for this project is listed now. I have selected the ATmega328P microcontroller from Atmel flashed with the Arduino bootloader in order to operate the nodes. This is the same chip that is used on the Arduino Uno, however I will not be using the Arduino platform for this project. The radio module that will be used is the RFM12B from Hope RF, which operates in the 433 MHz range of the ISM band, so that no license is required. For the archi archival nodes, data storage will be accomplished with an SD card in order to maximize ease of use. The last main component of the hardware is the DS3234 real-time clock module from Maxim slash Dallas Semiconductor. This clock module features a 70 nanoamp sleep current as well as an internal temperature compensated oscillator from which a temperature reading may be retrieved from. Because of this, every node will natively include an integrated temperature sensor. Displayed now is the full schematic of the data logger. A special note is the four modular sensor connectors that include an analog line, a digital line, power connections, as well as a shared interrupt request line. This image better shows the connections on the microcontroller. As stated, each node supports four digital sensors on PD4, 5, 6, and 7, and four analog sensors on A1, 2, 3, and 4. Additionally, the full SPI bus is broken out with three slave select lines available. One is used for the real-time clock, another for the transceiver or SD card, depending on the mode, and the third one is for use by the end user for a sensor. Additionally, the I2C bus is broken out as well as the UART peripheral. Two interrupt lines are used, one for the transceiver and the other is shared between all sensor channels and the real-time clock. Each node is capable of receiving a wake-up signal from the sensor interrupt line, the real-time clock's alarm feature, the internal watchdog timer, or a combination of several of these. The real-time nodes each are assigned a unique ID by the base station when they are started up. This is implemented in a similar fashion to a DHCP server. Sensor data from the nodes is transmitted to the base station using a node-specific update interval. The data is transferred using the packet format displayed. Note that a small packet format was selected in order to minimize the total transmission time and thus save power. The preamble and CRC are generated internally by the transceiver module. The header is used to set the source or destination address depending on the mode as well as the payload length. The payload is the actual sensor data and is encoded in a format similar to the next slide. For the offline, archival nodes configuration and sensor data are stored on an SD card. Both FAT16 and FAT32 cards are supported. A screenshot of the configuration file is shown on the upper right side of the screen. Some available options include the file name to save the data to, the wake-up interval, whether or not to log the temperature from the real-time clock, the number of analog and digital channels to log, and a name for each channel to be included in the saved CSV file. 
Below this image is a section of the saved CSV file. The first part, starting with 14599, is the timestamp of the recording encoded in Unix time. Next is the temperature from the real-time clock if the configuration specified it to be logged. Following this is the ADC readings for the various channels. Note that only the first analog channel is recorded as specified in the configuration file. Midway through the file, it may be seen that the timestamp jumped from about 14599 to 18903. This is due to me placing the node in the freezer to log the temperature as an example. As a result of this, however, both the device battery and the clock's backup battery froze and caused the clock module to glitch. Additionally, you may note that the temperature started at around 22.5 degrees Celsius and slowly dropped while the voltage reading was around 640, which is about 8 volts of the 12 volt supply. After the glitch, you can see that the temperature started to rise again, however the battery reading had dropped to around 575, which is about 6 volts, and was much slower to recover from the freezing temperature. In an actual implementation, the batteries would need to be thermally insulated. The node and its modules, however, are capable of withstanding temperatures of negative 25 degrees Celsius. In conclusion, the ability to easily record data may improve the efficiency of society, increase the safety of humans, and improve the reliability of machines and various systems. The outcome of this project is a successfully implemented portable data logging device. The focus on low power consumption has caused the nodes to have a long run life. The following slides show images of the various nodes produced. Firstly is the archival node used in the example previously demonstrated. As this was just logging temperature from the real-time clock, no additional sensors are connected. Secondly is a photo showing the real-time node and the required base station. Looking closely, you'll see that both modules are very similar. The node features the real-time clock module, the transceiver, sensor lines, a voltage regulator, and a 12-volt battery supply. The base station features the transceiver, a voltage regulator, and a UART cable that connects it to the USB port. Additionally, power is drawn from the USB port through this cable. Looking closely, one will see a wire with one end unconnected near the transceivers. This serves as the antenna for the nodes. This last photo shows my testing setup for the upcoming video. In lieu of actual analog sensors, this panel of potentiometer serves as analog inputs. The pots are connected to the analog channels of the node and their respective values will be displayed on the software GUI in the following video demonstration. In order to implement the software-based GUI monitoring station, Processing 3.0 was utilized. Upon initial startup, you will notice that the graphs and gauges begin at zero until a connection to the node has been established. Once this connection has occurred, however, the values adjust to the currently outputted values. You will note the four gauges across the top, the single gauge at the bottom right, and the four graphs. The four upper gauges reflect the current readings from the four analog channels in this case, and the graphs reflect the current and past values of these channels. The gauge in the bottom right displays the current temperature reading from the integrated temperature sensor on the real-time clock on the node. The first channel is labeled battery voltage and is indeed measuring the battery voltage from the 12 volt supply ran through a potential divider to bring it down to a measurable 5 volts. The other three channels, however, are reading the values of the potentiometers and for this example have been set up to emulate a basic weather station. As I move a pot, for example, the relative humidity, the needle on the respective gauge rotates accordingly. Additionally, the graph updates as well. Below the, below the needle are three values. The large value is the current mapped reading for that channel. The small values below this are the low and high ranges for the safe zone, indicated in green with the lowest safe level on the left side and the highest safe level on the right side. You will note that each gauge has its own set of ranges and thus their own range of red and green on the dials. If I cause the dial to move into the red zone, for example the temperature dial, you will firstly notice that a two-tone alarm sounds. Additionally, the unit flashes to indicate which channel is triggering the alarm and the graph starts outputting a value in red. Once the fault has been cleared, the value returns to the safe margin the alarm goes off and the graph goes back to being green. The alarm operates both in the upper ranges as well as in the lower ranges for the out of safety margins. Additionally, alarms can be triggered on more than one dial. For example, if I increase the temperature and decrease the pressure, you'll see that both channels flash and the alarm sounds and will continue to sound until both slots have been cleared. So I have cleared the temperature fault. The temperature unit stops flashing, however, the pressure is still at fault and the alarm is still triggering. So if I correct that, they're both now fixed and the alarm no longer is triggering. The minimum maximum ranges for the sensors on, are set on the node itself and transmitted to the GUI. For example, the minimum temperature reading is negative 40 and the maximum is 125. The actual data is sent from the node as a value between 0 and 1024 for the analog channels and is then mapped to the minimum maximum range by the GUI itself. 
as noted by the relative humidity not every channel needs an alarm on it as I can adjust the needle up and down and it never triggers an alarm additionally alarms can be triggered on just one side as indicated by the battery voltage the alarm will trigger if the voltage is below three and a half volts but there is no maximum that will cause an alarm to trigger lastly the pass readings can be seen on the graphs as as well as in the saved CSV file that is updated in real time by the GUI using the same format as previously shown for the archival nodes on the SD card.